So this time around, we are focusing on another aspect in risk and retain called uh, portfolio. Yeah, so what is a portfolio? A portfolio is just simply investing in more than one item. Investing in more than one. Take note of that word. So it can be two, three, four, as many as possible. So if you remember part one talked about investing in just a single investment. So now even a portfolio as well is, is also a different type of investment where you want to maybe combine uh, like more than one thing together to put in one investment. So we also do calculate the, the expected return on a portfolio and also the should I say the risk the risk as well for a portfolio just like we were able to calculate the expected return for a single investment and the risk which is also known as the standard deviation of also a single investment and so we can do the same also for a portfolio so what is the general formula for calculating should I say expected return on a portfolio so just before we jump into that Take note of uh, certain key words that are used, knowing that okay, they are talking about a portfolio. They might use words like uh, you want to merge, huh? maybe you want to merge two different assets, huh? two or more, it could be two or three, as we said, huh? two or, or more different assets. Another word they could use is uh, combine. So, they all mean one and the same. The only thing is they might just be interchanging these words. So they might even use certain words like you want to invest in A and B. You know, just from that, should I say that tonation of the sentence? Huh? And and means that you know you're taking you're taking things together. Yeah, if you realistically think about that. And and like if they told you A or or B, then someone wants to choose between one of them, right? If you really think about it so you know such ways like merge combine this and that this and that you know you'll be able to take note that okay they are talking about a portfolio here and you without a doubt know that okay this is a question dealing with portfolio so now we were saying how do you calculate the expected return on a portfolio so Expected return, just like we had the expected return in when it's a single investment. So it's expected the uh, rate of return as well. We also get to calculate it, which is equal to, um, should I say the summation of uh, the weight of the first asset that you invest in times the expected return of that first asset plus the weight of the second asset uh, time or oh, plus so oh, sorry times the expected uh, return on the second asset so even put some dots uh, they could be more than this uh, plus you know depending on maybe the number of assets that you're investing in so me i've just given like a rough estimate like okay maybe you've just done two so you take note that in this formula we have a w what does that mean so the w stands for weights what do they just mean by weights Weight is just a fraction uh, of the total investment. Like that particular asset, what fraction is it in terms of the total investment? Take, for instance, this example. I'll just erase what's on the screen so uh, you can try to understand what I mean by weight is a fraction of the total investment. So imagine you've been given... Uh, so the following details are huh? they'll tell you okay if you invest in a usually if you invest in a they'll tell you okay sixty thousand b forty thousand and they tell you that okay you want to invest in a and and b and those are the possible investment uh, values that you need to should i say to to put in yeah so then they then you tell yourself, okay, if I if, it's, if A is 60 and B is 40, the total investment will be how much here? 100,000, right? Then now you ask yourself, they said weight. Weight, huh? 
it's a fraction of that particular investment in the total total investment if you look at a what is the fraction of a in the total investment it's practically 60,000 over what over 100,000 so let me just write that well okay over 100 thousand that's what they meant by weight is the fraction of that particular investment in the total investment and so if if you take this to the simplest form you find that this should just leave you with uh it's six six over ten i'll just rewrite that six over over ten so this is the fraction of a in the total investment which is what they call the weight the fraction yeah so you can actually write it as a fraction or a decimal both are correct so if i had to take the decimal this is just 0 0.6 then you look at uh, asset b for example if you also since you're taking a and b let's also take the fraction of b in the total investment it's about forty thousand, right over what hundred thousand what's the fraction of that one four over ten uh, simplest form it's about four over ten so as we said you can if you want you can take a fraction or the should i say the decimal of that so one thing again to know once you have found your weights huh? when you sum up both weights you should never exceed one the rule is that the total summation of all the weights in that investment should always add up to one and you can prove this by punching that on your calc 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 will definitely add you up to to one that shows you that you are doing the right thing so you might have 10 investments if you add them up all those so if you add all the weights up you should never exceed one you should just reach one and that's the limit for all weights yeah so that's the way that you are seeing in that formula and that's usually how you get it if you're not given an equation you use this type of analysis they give you okay a costs this much b costs that much the total investment you do just like we have done and thereafter, you easily interpret the weights which are just a fraction of that particular investment in the total investment. Then you're good. You're done. If you've been given the question, well and good. You just substitute in the formula and you're done. So um, that's basically the how you get to calculate the expected uh, rate of return on a portfolio. So the formula once again is, so I've just put R. And like a small p what does that small p mean the expected return on a portfolio is equal to the summation of w we said one maybe asset the first asset times the r1 plus w2 and r2 so we already know now what weight is that r i are seeing there just to explain it uh, by the way let me just include the bar there that R bar with a comma, should I say a hyphen on top there of the R, that is just simply called the, the expected return on that particular asset. Huh? They will definitely specify this in a question. They'll be like, okay, as this asset one, like they were putting one, this asset one has an expected return of so much. Then, of course, they even tell, okay, the weight of this asset one is also that. Then they'll tell you, of course, the weight of asset two, they give you, and also the expected return on that particular asset maybe assets two as well they also give you so most of the time it will be given and then from there you work it out in that formula and you're done that's how you get the expected rate of return in uh should i say a portfolio just like we had risk for a single investment you can also calculate the risk of a portfolio so portfolio risk to follows the same theory that you have to calculate the standard deviation at some point portfolio risk that's the heading so we also need to calculate the risk any investment that you take on there is risk involved you never forget that so the formula is uh, standard deviation has got this sigma this uh, symbol which is also called sigma by the way then a small p is equal to the square root the square root of w a yeah w maybe let's say asset a then you square that then you have this symbol and then you square plus w b and then you also square that then there again 
uh, that for B and then you also square plus 2 WA WB okay so just the space that has uh, somehow eluded me on this page can I just write the, an arrow of how this is supposed to continue this just follows continuation with the arrow after that WB you should have uh, this continuation in the same formula a slanting P should I say that then you put those small small letters then you have that at the end and that so basically this is the formula of calculating the risk on a portfolio it does look like something somewhat involving huh? yeah so basically this is the formula so the wa are seen there it just simply means the weight and we've already explained what weight is so you'll be given your own weight in the question or if you haven't been given just follow what the earlier part of this video said on how to calculate weight if not given so weight of a may be particular the asset a after you get the weight of a there's a square on top right meaning you square it so if maybe the weight was like 6 over 10 like what we did you you say 6 over 10 then after the brackets you you square 6, six over 10 that's what you do then what does this mean the one which has uh, like is it an o like shape with a small a below that's also that just simply means the standard deviation of a then after you get the standard deviation of a then you square it so again maybe someone might ask would it would it be given so okay most of the time standard deviation can be given yeah if not given if not remember if not given you have to compute it like the way we compute for a single asset because mind you these figures that you're seeing here like standard division of a these are just relating to this particular that particular asset when you're solving it uh, as a single investment uh, so it will have its own standard deviation and that's the one which will come and get and substitute here so if, if it's been given then well and good you just get it and then you square it of course weight of b same thing you get you put the weight of b and then you square it standard deviation of uh, b that that symbol which looks like an o and there's small b there that's the standard deviation of b again if you're not given you just have to revert back like the way we solved in part one which was talking about a single investment like you just saw for b alone get the standard deviation for b alone the answer you get then come and put it here so you can see the process becomes longer if you are not told yeah that's what just makes somewhat makes this topic challenging when you're not giving certain details it's like you have to work back and then come back and substitute and then of course once you get the standard deviation for b you square it plus two this two here just stands for just a number it's just a number two so two will be multiplying w a the weight of a the weight of b yeah it's already known most of the time if you are given you just substitute there and they are multiplying with the two thereafter what does that sleeping p and those two small letters below it mean that just simply means correlation coefficient so this sleeping p just means correlation coefficient so most of the time this one as well they can tell you as well the correlation coefficient was maybe one because the correlation coefficient is just a should I say it's a number between negative one and uh, positive one it's just between there so if you are told okay maybe it was one you just can't put the one there the a and b don't worry they don't mean anything it's, it's, they just simply mean the correlation coefficient of a and b that's just the full detailed should i say meaning of that sleeping p thereafter you've seen that side huh? there is like an o shape again the same o shape that we started with there in this equation it just simply means the standard deviation of a without squaring now this time if you've noticed it doesn't have any square on it then the other, the other one is the standard deviation of of b as well without squaring and then we are just multiplying so you obviously have your correlation times the standard deviation of b and a there you multiply so usually what we do to not to avoid making errors when punching huh? we do this this part here where i'm closing huh? i've closed some brackets here where the two starts from going going following that arrow right it's like punch this part separates to avoid making a mistake punch this part separate starting from the two going downwards follow the arrow 
reaching this sleeping pee and they told like I was saying, I said that to not make a mistake, you first uh, start by solving this part where which starts from the two onwards following the arrow to this last part where there's a sleeping P, the the standard division of A and A and of B. You solve that part, then you come back and add together with uh, the the calculations for this part which starts with the W A until here where there's a standard deviation of B squared. That's why you you stop. So you solve these two parts separate and then after that the answers you get you add them and then you can make the square root. That way you will not make a mistake. So that's all on portfolio risk or should I just say basically what you need to know on a portfolio. Yeah, so the next video that will come through should be on the last uh, heading in uh, this topic of risk and return called uh, is it the capital asset pricing model.